Sixth Chairman. Amendment. Chairman, are you, are you on the list? I'm <laughs> then Mr. Stearns, you're next. I'm, I'm next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. Reserve a point of order. Gentlelady from Colorado reserves a point of order. The clerk uh, will report the amendment. Amendment to the committee print offered by Mr. Stearns. Amend section 6001A2 to read as follows. Two, the state will implement a plan. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read and gentlemen uh, from Florida is recognized to talk about his amendment for two minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. You know, when you, you have these amendments, I like to give an overview for my colleagues. Basically, what this is is sort of uh, can be f thought of this way. Uh, in the state of Florida, we worry about hurricanes. In California, they might worry about earthquakes. Um, every state has a building code, a commercial building code and a respective residential building code. And many state legislatures have just passed a code to enforce that is peculiar for that state. And as it turns out, in the bill that we have before us, we're having a whole new national code presented, which the governors are going to be asked to comply with, local government authorities to accept the most recent versions which are in this bill for residential and commercial buildings. So what this means is that they will not be able to get their government money, their support, unless they comply to this national code. And again, every state has already passed certain codes that are peculiar and helpful for their state. So my amendment would seek to correct this by asking the states to create a plan for implementing and enforcing the respective residential and commercial building codes that is likely to ensure that at least 90 percent of the new and renovated residential and commercial building space will meet the state's chosen standards within eight years after the enactment of this act. So basically I'm saying let the states decide and let them have their code which is suited for individual states. Homeowners understand the financial sense in making their homes more energy efficient through high-tech installation, better windows, more efficient heating, cooling systems, solar panels like they do in Florida. Um, do we want to have Washington to set up a national code which is going to increase the cost and ask all the state legislatures to come up with its brand new uh, regulation when they've already, already have passed and developed their own. So my amendment is very simple, Mr. Uh, Chairman, is to let the states uh, comply uh, in their in their own prospective ways, which in many cases, particularly in our state, I think is suitable. Mr. Chairman, I'll Gen withdraw my reservation. Time has expired. The gentleman from Colorado withdraws her point of order. The chair recognizes himself for two minutes uh, to oppose the amendment. And the reason I op oppose the amendment is that uh, the underlying Print has the um, secretary doing all he he can to get the states to to try the governor to try to get a code in place and to enforce it. Uh, this uh, amendment, however, says that um, the state's chosen standards within eight years, and that may not be uh, meeting the the best standards that we would hope the states on their own would adopt. Mr. Markey, I want to yield to you to further elucidate on why this amendment is not a good amendment. I thank the, general, I thank the, the, the chair. Um, this is really a gutting amendment. What we're trying to do here is to uh, create a set of incentives in the bill that gives goodies to the states. And what we're saying here is that, um, that there's a standard, uh, which is a current standard, uh, which is in the underlying bill, which uh, we brought here to the committee today. What Mrs. Stern's bill says is that a state can just choose a standard. That is, the state could choose 1975's building standards, 1985's building standards. Well, we're looking at current standards. That's what we're asking for in the legislation, because if there are benefits to be derived, uh, there should be some standard which is there. So this is a current standard and not something that can be selected arbitrarily, which rather than advancing, undermines our goal of ensuring that the buildings in the United States uh, where 40 percent of all energy is consumed are allowed to be uh, built under standards that are 10, 20 years old. So that's all we're really asking for. It's a standard that is accepted by 
uh, the in, by the industry. And so it's a very simple uh, 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 process that's in the legislation, and we urge a no vote on the Stearns Amendment. Reclaiming my time, I join you in urging a no vote, and we'll proceed to a vote. Mr. Stearns, are you willing to have a voice vote? Chairman, let me compromise with you. Instead of a roll call or a voice vote, why don't we do a hands and then have your folks count the hands so then we have a final. Okay, all those in favor of the Stearns Amendment will raise your hand. And the clerk will count the vote. Hey, Ralph, put up two hands, would you? <laughs> Like 33 okay. to 21. Okay. Now, uh, those opposed to the amendment will come into the room and raise <laughs> his or her hand. Clerk will report the, the hand vote. Mr. Chairman, uh, the division vote was 15 ayes and 29 against. 15, well, the. the 15 the, to 29. 15 the, to 29. 15 to 29, according to the tally of hands, the amendment's not agreed to.